Welcome to Sips with Scrubs, a nurse podcast where we talk about the good, bad, and ugly of being a nurse. Today, Kelsey is back with us. So for those who are not familiar, just a little quick rundown on us. Kelsey's been working with me for forever. So we've been knowing each other for four years now because we started um, nursing together. So she actually started a couple of months before me. And from there, we've basically been going to job to job together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've had our little separate ventures and always have come back. So we're very familiar with th- with each other. We've worked together a lot. So we're able to have like a lot of good dialogue, I feel, because we've shared a lot of the same experiences, but of course, from different perspectives. So we have lots to talk about today. So that's a really qu- quick little rundown for those who are new listening. So Today, guys, we're excited. Or I'm excited. I've been thinking about these drinks for I don't know how long because I was like, I I'm, hope a, they sweet. I'm a bartender today, guys. Mm-hmm. So today, the focus really is these uh, whip shops that uh, Cardi B put out. So we have the vanilla kind. So Kelsey actually was going on her birthday trip and I saw that she had them and she tasted it. And Kelsey is like, she likes sweet drinks. Mm-hmm. So... I was like, oh, is it good? And she said, yeah. And it's I was like, okay, I want to try. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I want to try it and see how it is. So that's what I'm trying today. But the drink we're actually drinking is called Fire Island. Uh-huh. So I'll have the ingredients and stuff on the screen for those who are interested in making it at home. But essentially, it's like vanilla vodka, champagne, passion fruit, lime, and vanilla syrup. So I feel like all that stuff is pretty sweet. So we're hoping that it tastes good. We'll see. So. You ready to try it? Yeah. I'm scared, low key, because if I don't like it, I'm being mad. I I know. I like vanilla too, but I'm like, if I don't like it, I'm being highly. I mean, we always add stuff to it, maybe. Yeah. Facts. Hmm. It's not that passion fruit knocked me in my throat. I can drink this. Okay. Okay, I'm not mad at it. It's really sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which could be possibly a problem because we don't know how the alcohol will hit us well, later. I work tomorrow, so it's whatever. I mean, yeah, but still, it's just like, oh, <laughs> I fall asleep on the floor. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm. But it tastes good. If y'all like, like sweet it. drinks, definitely check this out. I kind of feel it's like a, a fall type of drink. Not like summer. I feel like the passion fruit makes it a summer. You feel like passion fruit? Okay, I see that. I think I'm thinking of more of like the color and stuff like that. But it's like um, they told us to chill it. I think um, I only had it in the shaker for a little bit, so it's not cold, cold. So I'm wondering how that makes wait, it taste wait, differently. What is the liquor in here? It's champagne and then like vanilla, vanilla. vodka. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna sneak up. Yeah, that's why I was like, we'll see. Um. <laughs> we're gonna see how we feel at the end of this episode so keep them with the vanilla whip shots we're gonna do a little game and if we've done it we're gonna take a shot of the vanilla whip shot so for those who are at home that are listening if y'all want to join us go ahead and pour up you can sip or you can take a shot this is not real shots so this is the vanilla whip shot that i mentioned before about cardi b So this is only 10% alcohol. So it's like a vodka infused whipped cream. So that's what we're going to be taking shots of. So drink if you had secretions thrown at you. I think at Six West that I've had. Never. I don't. wish somebody would. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. I'm going to take a shot anyway. I just remember I had a patient in Six (laughs) West who pooped and she had it underneath her fingernails. And I thought I remember her trying to fling it at people. I, I wish a patient would try to do that. Confused or not. Mm. <laughs> this is good. I think you did too big of a shot. I did. Yeah, she's struggling. <laughs> For those who are listening. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was she's too big. She's struggling. She's struggling to swallow. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> 
You thought it was a regular whipped cream. It's thick. Ooh, child. Okay. Yeah, that's thick. Mm-hmm. So, like, ready whip whipped cream? I don't eat whipped cream. I do. Yeah. No, this whipped cream is thick. Um, I And I feel like I expanded even more than I thought. Wow. Okay. So, drink if you've gone an entire shift without eating. That ain't me either, because one thing about me, I'm going to eat. I don't think I'm... No, I'll be hungry. No. Even if it's... I will say I have taken, like, a shorter lunch, but never not completely gone. I'll pass out. No, I won't, but I'll fake it. I'm like, one way or another, I'm going to find some food. I got to eat at the nurse's station. That's what I'm about to say. I will bring my food to the nurse's station and be eating on the unit. And when they're looking at me like, why are you doing this? Because we We busy busy. and I can't take a proper break. And then, okay, try to say something now. (laughs) They're just going to be like, well, you know you're not supposed to. No? Okay, then you can cover me so I can take a proper break. (laughs) Okay? Yeah. That's how I feel about it. (laughs) Okay. Drink if... You've thrown up at something you've seen at work. <laughs> <laughs> For those listening, Kelsey just took a shot. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. I told you it was thick. I didn't even do that much this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell us about that. Um, A patient with really bad liver cirrhosis. Their poop starts smelling. Once their skin starts turning orange, their poop smells a certain color. This wasn't even my patient. I was helping them. I was. Tell- I think the nurse was on break. The patient called. I went in. I smelled that poop. I had to. G- she was on the bedside commode. I said, "Stay right there." I went in her restroom and started like. Eh. So you actually vomited. A little spit came out. Not a full, bleh, but it was enough to make me hurl some secretions. Oh my goodness! The smell. And she was like, "Are you okay?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm good." I'm the patient. You- I'm like, I'm getting you some toilet tissue. Oh, I said the patient or the nurse. No, the nurse wasn't there. I was helped. The oh. nurse, I think, was on break or something. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, okay, okay. I wish I never walked in the room. I was thinking it was like somebody asked Mm-mm. you for work, like for help. Can you help me clean this patient type of thing? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's just a smell hit me. More recently, I've never had a problem with like gagging or anything like that before. But more recently, I had this patient. He pooped. And you know how sometimes with men, the poop gets stuck to their balls? I can't stand that. So... It was like a lot of poop and it was kind of like, it wasn't caked on cause it wasn't like old poop, yeah. but it was like stuck on the balls where his hair was and you had to keep wiping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm getting it all, but I'm trying to get it all off. So it's not, you know, yeah. like no breakdown or anything like that. And I was just like, the fact that I kept having to more wipes Lift and it do up, it again, I was more. just like, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Drink if. You've gone to work or clinicals in extreme weather. I mean, rain. It's Houston. Oh, I got straight air. Hold on. <laughs> we both took a shot on that one. Yeah. I mean, it's Houston. Come on now. Hurricane weather. Damn. Yeah. With Houston, you're going to go to work in extreme weather. When I first started um, working for the person we work for now, um, it was during the ice storm. I was so stressed uh, out. I think I was off, so I was chilling at home. I was so stressed out because I was like, it was my first day, like, of orientation. So I was like, what are, who am I supposed to call to call in? You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't like I was on the unit yet. Yeah. It was literally, like, the first day. And I was trying to email people. And at first, it wasn't seem like they were trying to do nothing. And I'm like... I'm calling the main line. Please connect me to this unit, please. Thank you. But it's not not on a unit yet. You're doing like the pre stuff before you even get up the, to the unit. But technically, that's your. I feel like okay. But if that's all I know, how my uh, unit. That's I don't even think call. I had the unit number though. I think mm. that I had the emails of like HR and stuff yeah. like that because it was like HR stuff we had to do first. So I was emailing them, and I was like, "Cause they're not there that early in the morning for you to see the emails. They don't get there till." It's- the class about to start exactly so i was stressed because i was like i don't know how to approach this situation i've never had that happen to me before yep. so i was like okay i was trying to email them and then it seemed like they were trying to make us come in initially but i guess like i don't know if it was like multiple people oh, okay. who were trying to contact them regarding that so they ended up emailing us after and talking about we're going to push the orientation day back or whatever but i was stressed about that because i was like how am i supposed to drive in ice like literally no me and Jordan were like mapping out my route to work because you like we have train tracks and stuff over here. Oh, yeah. So I was like, how am I what am I supposed to do? And then 
I don't know. I think they might have uh, did some construction since then. But the way it was is that it had like a very downward slope to get to the light where you turn left at. And I was like, that's dangerous. Because yeah. I'm like, if it's ice there, I must slide into the, the ditch. Oh. So I was stressed out because I was like, <laughs> I was asking my dad, I was like, how are you driving ice? And he talked about don't. <laughs> I mean, they say if you don't have to, don't. But, you know, for us. I mean, but it would be different. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if you missed it because it wasn't patient care. Yeah. I just didn't know. I yeah. think it was more so the, like, I don't know who to contact sort mm-hmm. of thing that was stressing me out. But I was going to try to make it work. But I was like, I'm going to turn around me, if I I'm have to. Drive 20. <laughs> just... Shoot. And I've definitely driven to work in, like, bad, bad rain before. Definitely have done that before. Mm-hmm. You had to go to work. When they uh, did a hurricane thing. Yeah, so the hurricane was coming. I'm on Team A. So I brought my... Wait, pause. Explain Team A for those who might not be familiar. Oh, Team A for the hospital is the team who's going to work during the severe weather. And then Team B is the team that's going to come in after the hurricane or whatever is gone and they're going to relieve them. So say I work for 14 days during the hurricane, Team B has to come in and work for 14 days straight after us because we need 14 days off, basically. So I'm Team A. I had, they was the biggest foot, I had two suitcases and a queen size air mattress. But I, I, was, I was like, I'm going to be comfortable because you don't want me at work and I'm not comfortable. I'm mm-hmm. gonna, I'll bring my own stuff. It's fine. <laughs> then they canceled it. Pulled up. 30 minutes later, like, oh, the hurricane's turning, so we don't really... We're not going to give y'all the pay anymore, but since y'all are here, y'all have to work the shift. And I was like, it's not even my scheduled shift, technically, like, but it's too late to call the rec. Man, I was mad. Wait, so they still made you work the shift? Yeah, so the people who were regularly scheduled, if they weren't Team A, they told them not to come in because we're Team A. They told us to come in. Oh, because they were so like, they were oh, like y'all here. are already here. But we were like, it's early enough that you can call them and get them come in. They were like, no, that's too much trouble. Can y'all y'all have to work since y'all are here. I mean, is it too much trouble? No. Exactly. But they don't want yeah, to. It's easier to like, make us work because we're there. Physically. Right, yeah. Mm, you know, they're, everybody I feel like is ready to inc- inconvenience us, but not, they don't want to be inconvenienced. Mm-hmm. That's typical. Okay. <laughs> I just laughed at this because I know Kelsey. <laughs> Drink if you've cried at work. Who the? I mean, you got the shit. I mean, sorry. <laughs> oh, and not it's not crying out of sadness. That's the thing. Hold on. Not for Kelsey. I cry when I am angry. When I'm sad, I be like, whatever. I don't get sad at work. What am I sad about? Nothing. I be angry at work. <laughs> I'm not sad. What am I sad about? I be angry. Uh, I'm upset. <laughs> okay, drink if you've been fired by a patient. I have. Do you remember that black lady in that room and I was trying to give her to you? Remember? Oh. That yeah. charge nurse who didn't want to interfere? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I've never been fired. That's the only time I've been fired. I think I've only had like two complaints in my entire life, but they didn't fire me. Mm-hmm. And the complaints were like ill, not even like real. Yeah, I got fired um, because it's, I don't know what was her problem, actually. But she was a hassle for me anyway. So I was like, bet. I was trying to give her to Kelsey. Kelsey didn't want to no. take her. I what said, did we end up? Oh, it was towards the end of the shift. So that was what was crazy really about it. It's just like, just keep an eye on her. Kind no, of. I did not keep an eye on her. She fired me. So I'm like, I'm not going back in that room. So I told the charge nurse and she didn't want to do anything about it. I'm like, this is literally your job as a charge nurse is like kind of like patient relations and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And advocating for your staff. So I communicated with her like, oh, this patient doesn't want me to be her nurse anymore because I can't even remember the reasons. I was like, um, it's almost two years ago or something. I think because like you were, um, I remember some she, patients just want you to agree with them, but some of us were going to be like, no, that doesn't make any sense. You weren't. She was one of them ones that she didn't want to do anything at the hospital. But she wanted to stay there. Right. So, but what was fine with me, I'm like, that's fine. Just tell me what you want, what you don't want. So I don't have to keep coming back in your room, you know, with medications and stuff. And I have to return to the pixies. Yeah. So I kind of asked her in the beginning of the shift, like, okay, what are you willing to do today? And what don't you want to do so I can make the proper adjustments? So she said she didn't want any of these medications. All right, fine. I tried her. She didn't want them. Notified the doctors. And I basically just checked in on her like the hourly round and like, do you need help with anything or anything like that? And that was basically it. But I think she started getting upset with me because she was asking me something and she didn't like the way I was responding to her. It's something crazy like I that. Like that yeah. And I was just like, OK, but I thought I just thought it was crazy because I was like, I ain't even been in your room all day. So what, what you lit about? <laughs> but anyway, 
Yeah, she ended up firing me. Tried to tell the charge nurse about it. The charge nurse didn't seem like she really gave a F, to be frank. She didn't go in the patient room to see what was going on or any of the normal things I'm used to charge nurses doing. So then she was talking about, oh, try to give it to Kelsey. Kelsey didn't want her, which is fine. No, because I said if she having issues with Lainey because of how she responds to things. How do you think she's going to do with me? We're just like, when it comes to stuff like that, we the same. So that makes sense. So it's kind of like, okay, it kind of defeats the purpose. If you were to give her to somebody, you need to be a different type of nurse. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So it was towards the end of the shift anyway, which is why I was kind of like, stupid. It was, five, it was like five, it's like five o'clock. Yeah. yeah, so girl. We'll just make sure she, we'll, you know, we'll kind of, we were like, on the chargers like this is your patient no yeah i told her so well kelsey don't want to take care of her so that's your patient now you can't make me switch assignments if I, I would get if it's like early on the shift it's the last hour i'm not switching my assignment for something unless it's like dire illness no if it's a complaint like that and she no i'm, not I'm like we didn't made it this far girl then it, it's not that deep <laughs> So we're going to get into our topics for this episode. So it's Kelsey. So we just going to be chit chatting and bouncing around on different stuff we normally would talk about. Um, so I actually wanted to tell you something that's really funny. So I remember on Saturday when we ordered that Chinese food, we mm -hmm. had that fortune cookie and mom was talking about you're going to make a new friend who's going to change your old routine. Yeah. Why um, <laughs> that happened? Who? So my family had a picnic maybe like a week or so ago. And my family's big. Like we don't all know each other because it's too many of us. Mm -hmm. But they had it this like outside of like the immediate family, like outside of like your regular aunts and uncles and maybe even your great aunts and uncles. So it was like everybody was there. So my great grandma was one of 15 kids. Exactly. So that lets you know that's how that yeah. started. So I met a cousin there. And I forgot that I actually used to go to middle school with her sister. Like, we went to middle school together, but we didn't know we were cousins. We were already friends. Uh oh. And then she played on the basketball team, and I was a cheerleader. So our parents saw each other at the game, and that's how we found out we were cousins. Oh, because your parents knew. Right. Oh, y'all just did it. Okay. Yeah, we weren't aware, but then they saw each other, and they were like, oh, that's your cousin. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of wild. So my great-grandma and their grandma were sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're cousins. Now, don't ask me which number that is. I think it's like a third or something cousin. I don't care. But, yeah, y'all get the point. So her sister has been going to this workout class that I've been going to at my gym, but I didn't know that was her. Okay. But she's very, like, unique looking. Like, she has a big afro and she wears red glasses. So it's like, don't nobody really look like that. So I saw her at the family picnic and I was like, aren't, don't you go to this class at this gym? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And then I realized, oh, that's that girl's sister I went to middle school with. But I hadn't seen her yeah. since middle school because yeah. we don't like interact like that. Like once we had went to different schools or whatever, because we're not, like I said, the family's really big. So we don't like link up like that. So I thought that was too funny because now she's talking about, oh, like, come to the class on Monday. So I went this morning and she like she goes every Monday, like in the morning and evening. So she's like, oh, so you go be back tonight? And I was Dang. like, I was like, nah, I'm doing something tonight. But I was like, the next Mondays I'm off. So I guess I'll do it because I've been saying I wanted to lose weight. So I just thought that was funny because I was like, that fortune cookie was right. <laughs> <laughs> My fortune didn't make no sense. Yeah, hers was, it was like. If somebody believes in something, even it's true to them, they're going to find somebody who agrees with them. It don't matter what they got to do. Something like that. Like Maybe a situation is going to come up. I get it, though. It's like, if I believe this, I'm going to find somebody to convince, and I'm going to make them get on my side and believe this. I understand, because me and Jordan talk about that all the time, because we were like, you can find anything on the internet to, like, prove your point. Like All you need is a few people to, like... Yeah, I'm like, on it's the on the internet, way. so it's like, that's easy to do. So I brought her up because of the fortune cookie, but also because I was talking to her about this situation. So I know you'd be watching the shade room or whatever. So did you see that post about how a nurse um, called the police on uh, the pregnant lady? I haven't. I saw you repost it, but I haven't read the story. Okay, so I'm going to play it so you and the people can hear. Oh, okay. Kids, 
But am I you? Are you me? Do you know how I feel? Do you know yeah, how I feel? I'm interested. I'm interested in how I think. I want to know what your mindset. So when you got pregnant, what were you thinking about? I was, I was thinking about having a kid. I, I'm confused on what you're going at. I'm confused too because you came in here and I did an assessment and I gave you my best medical. Okay, now it's like looping back to the beginning because it's starting in the middle. Okay, this is the next slide. Okay, you check my service, but how do you know how my bones, how do you know how my, my, my body feels, my legs, my back? How do you know how that feels? How do you know how my nausea feels? How do you know how my cramps feel? By touching And you're okay. All right, so this, this, is, this is the nurse practic practitioner. And look how she's hitting me. Look how she, look at it. Check her out. Check it out. Call the police. And, and they're going to see how you just, how you just, what you just did. Call the police. She already called the police on me once because I called her a weirdo. Yes. Look at you. <laughs> So that's actually starting kind of like in the middle of the um the story, but we're so that's kind of like the middle end of what the interaction was. So that's not the beginning. So on these next couple of slides is going to be her telling us what, what happened? happened from the beginning. Okay. I begged them to take me in for a week. I called and called and called, asked for an appointment. They finally told me to come in. I came in. The woman that you see in the video, all she did was when I tried to explain my pain and exactly what I was feeling, she cut me off, said, let me examine you. I want to feel your cervix. So when I got up on the table for her to examine me, she was very aggressive. She shoved her fingers in me. She just was, it was painful. So... After that, she just started telling me, oh, yeah, I can't give you a no, and, you know, uh, you can work. The most I could do is say you can't lift 25 pounds or more. So I started, you know, arguing my case, like, no, I really need my no. Let me just speak to the doctor. I would like to speak to the doctor. So she goes, I'm not going to argue with you. Long story short, we get back to the front desk. She's blurting out all my information. So I decided to push in the lobby. There's a patient in there. She hears everything. All my information is out there. The girl at front at the front desk is the doctor on the phone. The doctor wants me to go in the back office and talk to her on the phone to explain what's happening. Um, as we're walking back, then she goes, please don't take her to my office. So I said, nobody wants to go to your office. You're a weirdo for that. She comes back there and says, I called the police. I said, why would you call the police? She said, because you called me out my name. I said, because I called you a weirdo. She said, yeah. I said, okay, well, when the cops get here, I'm going to tell them you're a weirdo because you're a weirdo. There's no reason to call the cops. Because you got caught a name for something that you're acting like. Because the way you're acting is really weird. It's in the lobby. So, after I got off the phone with the doctor when I was in the back room, after she came back, there's cops in there. So, I'm like, oh my goodness, she really caught the cops. So, the cops are like kind of being aggressive to me, but not like super aggressive. That's why like I didn't get that on recording because I really was not trying to do anything for attention. Like I wasn't out to record nobody like... My, my first thought wasn't to record anything. What made me start recording was after everything was said and done, I spoke to the police, and, and she told the police. So it's the reason she called me was because she felt threatened. And I, I, I told the cop, I said, look at me like, I'm going eight months pregnant. I'm seven months pregnant. I'm pretty far along. Do I look like I'm in a position to be attacking somebody? Like, I, I don't understand what her problem is. And it was like, yeah, they, she, she said she felt like you just came in here just to get a note to get a free ride or, or some, some crazy stuff like that. After everything was all said and done, the doctor said that I was going to get my note, everything was going to be fine, sit in the office and wait as the woman in the front, the front desk gets it all ready. You know, they had to do something, sign and stuff. And so long story short, I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. So the woman from the video, the Karen, she walks up to me. I'm sitting there. I'm trying not to look at her. I'm just on my phone, just going through Instagram, I'm trying to, like, distract myself. So I'm looking at my phone. I already have my phone in my hand. She stands in front of me, and she says, she asks me the question, what were you thinking when you got pregnant? And um, it's the reason she called me. Just, I want to have a conversation with you um, since we no longer have a patient, doctor, um, relationship. She just was talking and talking and talking. So I finally just said, listen, I don't care what you got to say. Please get out my face, go about your day. So she goes, Jillian, you're a piece of 
what were you thinking when you opened your legs and got pregnant? From there, I immediately heard it and went to my camera because I was like, I got to get this on camera now. Like, now, like, yes, this is, I need to record this. So, and then y'all see what happened from there. So that that's the story, bro. Did that make sense to you? How? Because it it it's too much going on. <laughs> but it's, it, bro, it's, here's the first thing. They already say black women in uh, labor and delivery get treated differently. This is proving the point. And then it's just like, why you need to ask me why I got pregnant? I would have been like, I'm not asking you. I'm working. I'm just asking for a week off. Me, I have to give people doctor's notes from the doctor. I don't care if you. If your illness is serious or not, here, take the doctor. So it's never that serious, mm-hmm. but it just comes down to like, this is a white nurse practitioner. And a, obviously this is a black pregnant woman. And she feels entitled to ask me, why did, what did you think getting pregnant? You didn't have to work. Why did you open your legs? Like who does that? That's, oof, that's, that's very that's crazy. Like, you know, that's that's inappropriate. inappropriate. That probably never happened if it was the same race as a nurse practitioner. That was inappropriate and unprofessional on many levels. Then did you hear the part about her saying that she was saying her patient information in the lobby? Oh, I'm suing you for a HIPAA. Yeah, you, I'm you, like, that, that, that is HIPAA. HIPAA Everybody get confused with what HIPAA is. HIPAA is if I take direct patient care and I start telling the business that is a HIPAA violation. Yeah, disclosing your name, your medical information. Obviously, the person will know who she's talking about because she's talking to them in front of the other person. And she said she said her name, her name. She said Jillian. I'll be like, oh, what were you thinking? Sued. Yeah, and then she's saying all of this stuff out in the lobby. That's yeah, very inappropriate. And if y'all already had that altercation and you're no longer oh nurse practitioner, why do you need to come talk? Exactly. To me. But here's my thing: if I tell you, okay, yes, yeah, she's she's seven months pregnant. She came in because she was been having pain. Mm-hmm. Um, she examined her, but then I'm like, how you, I, one thing I've learned, if somebody tells me in their pain, there's no way I can tell them, no, you're not in pain. Everybody's yeah. pain is different. I've I'm, learned that's the that. the first thing they want. Well, one of the first thing they taught us in nursing school when we did vital signs, they said that pain is the fifth vital sign and it's subjective. And okay, it's, exactly. yeah, so her telling me, no, I'm not giving you a doctor's note because you don't want to worry. I'd be like, first of all, you can't tell me what my pain feels like. But I, you know, as a nurse practitioner, I would have been like, if I don't believe you, I'll be like, let me just get somebody else because I don't feel comfortable giving you a note. And that's fair. So let me just get somebody else. That's fine. If you'd be like, I don't feel comfortable. Let me get somebody else to give you a note. And even beforehand, if you um, listen to what she said, she said that she told the nurse practitioner, let me just talk to the doctor then. So that should have been the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, you as a nurse practitioner, you don't feel comfortable prescribing pain medications because y'all do know there's an opioid epidemic. Was she asking for pain medicine or just a doctor's note? She wanted a doctor's note so that she, I mean, not pain medication, but yeah, she wanted a doctor's note so that she didn't basically have to work. She only wanted a week off. No, she just wanted a week. She said she wanted a week off. It's not like for the rest of my pregnancy, I'm going to bed rest. That's why I'm like, it's a week off. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, okay, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, there's just so much that happened in that that story. I'm like, <laughs> crazy. But unfortunately, that is hell. So that wasn't even dealing with like you prescribing anything for pain, um, anyway. So it's just like, what what harm does this lady have in a week off? How does that affect you? You know, I think the nurse actually is feeling. Here's another black woman coming in here pregnant. Who knows where her job? Because they can see what type of job she has. She probably works at this type of job, and she wants to get a week off. Probably already has a kid. I think I heard one in the yeah. Background. I heard one in the background. She's just another one on welfare. Da 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 da. da. So that's what she stereotyped her for sure, one hundred percent. I'm trying to see if they mention what she did for a living. I don't think that's going to be mentioned because it doesn't matter. No, but I'm saying I think for some reason I might. No, I don't think she was a nurse, but let me just double check because all the nurses were posting this. See, that's why when I ever go to the hospital, I'm not telling y'all a nurse. I'm going to let y'all mess up. And then I'm going to tell y'all, be like, ooh, gotcha. Mm-mm. And I got a little bit of background at L&D that I know what is right and what's wrong. Okay, no, it's just an expected nurse that, okay, they said got an altercation with a nurse. Okay. Yeah, so she went to the center because she was experiencing pain and wanted a doctor's note for work. Okay, just making sense because it was a whole bunch of different stuff because that first couple of videos we heard was the nurse practitioner asking her like, what were you expecting when you got pregnant type of thing? Yeah, completely inappropriate and irrelevant anyway. Why are you even wasting your time talking about this? I would have got real sarcastic with her, but I can't say it on this podcast. And I'm like, that first, so the first two slides was like the end of the interaction that she mentioned um, before. So beforehand, she was saying that she already had called the police on her because she called her a weirdo, talking about she felt threatened. See, that's another thing that happens in where we live. I call you a weirdo. 
and now all of a sudden I'm threatening you? Come on now. I'm like, uh, where are the people in the office? See, if I was like a nurse there, like witnessing this, I'd have been I would have like, de-escalated the situation. Because they can't fire you for that. They can't be like, no. oh, she, exactly. So I'd be like, no, like, she did this. This is this, the MP. Of course, I have to work with her. She is in the wrong. Oh, and that might be why some people yeah, don't want to talk with because her. they're like, oh, I have to work for her. But would you really want to work with somebody like that? I'd probably no, try I to wouldn't. like change jobs. Yeah. Because if you're doing that to her, then what you going to do to me? That's how I always feel about like, it. Like, what if, yeah, like, just because you know me, I could be a stranger to you. Like, that's crazy. I definitely think I would like, because I'm like, there had to be other people in the office. No one wanted to step like in and de-escalate the situation. Or at least be like, hey, or, you know, move around, like, get from around her. Like, mm-hmm. why? Are, like, because she keeps coming back and interacting with this girl. I probably went to the patient like, hey, let me take you over here. And I was like, yeah. like please back up. Yeah, you over there and you over here. Yeah. She, you don't even have anything to do with I'm her like, Let me take point. you to the doctor. MP, please back up. That's You're re- being inappropriate right now love we about to contact hr <laughs> you're being highly inappropriate and racist and racist yeah <laughs> i just can't so that happened and i was talking to my cousin about it because her sister's pregnant and it, my mom i know there's like a netflix thing right now or hulu, hulu something about the black woman yeah. dying and with labor and we're the highest like the out of all the races we die the most during childbirth fat and that's a fact that's not an opinion yeah so my mom had watched that recently and so she was trying to tell me about it and i'm like mom that's been going on for i don't know how long unfortunately i'm like even in regular like med surge world it's the same type of thing i was just talking about with the patient we had on my unit she was of the lighter complexion and caucasian and um she got special treatment because she knew the higher ups and i legit said to somebody i said if she looked like me I would not be getting, they would say I'm hostile. She was cursing at the staff and they did not punish. I mean, you can't punish her, but they didn't do anything. But if that was me, oh, security's being called on me. They never call security on her because she knew people. I feel like that's not inappropriate. I am a big believer. I'm going to treat all my patients the same, whether you got money or not. Because what your what money you have does not affect my care. I don't, you don't pay me. Yeah. So it's irrelevant. The, the patient's uh, parents were doctors. I don't care. Who knew our like higher ups through, you know, networking. And I was like, I told somebody, I said, if that patient looked like me, we would not be in the same situation. That is so sad. But that's, you know, America, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Yeah. So my mom was uh, talking to me about that stuff, even though I know it's been going on. But, you know, now more people are realizing that that's mm-hmm. a thing. So we were, she was talking to me about that because she was asking, like, in the event when I have kids or whatever, like, what do I want to do? Usually they say, like, get a black OBGYN. Yeah, but I already have an OBGYN. And I've been knowing her since, like, I was... I need to get a new one. Yeah, I've been knowing her since I was, like, 18 or something like that. I've been going to her, so I already have a relationship with her. But I was already thinking anyway that I was um, possibly going to get, like, a doula or something like that. I just don't know the details. I haven't really details. thought about, like... How? That type of like, of course, I want to have a baby in the hospital, but then I've never thought about like doulas and I've you want to have the baby in the hospital. I'm I don't I said my first baby I want to be in the hospital and after I see how I can handle birth mm. if I do it okay then I might have a home birth I see or in mean. a like the center those centers they have so okay like in the middle not home birth not hospital but they have like centers that have like rooms mm. and bathtubs. I was like, I got to see how I have my first baby because I might have B type has complications. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I have to do more research into that. But I was like, when that time comes then I will. But a doula has definitely been something I was like, man, nah, that's a possibility I do. Because I was thinking, too, for sentimental reasons, um, Dora and I got married at the house mm-hmm. during the pandemic. So I was thinking about doing it here because I thought that'd be like like a sweet yeah. thing, like a Cause it's like our first house. Then we got married at the house and then our first child be at the house. But I kind of understand what you're saying too. Cause it's like, you don't know how you're going to react birth ex- yeah. with the first birth. So I'm like, I'm not sure. So that's why I was kind of thinking about the whole doula thing. And, um, our cousin that I was talking to her sister's pregnant and she has a doula. So I was like, okay, I know someone personally who's going through this with that person so i was like let's see how that goes and maybe i'll consider but even it if you don't have a doula i'm like if you find an OBGYN who you tell them like this is i don't want to be laying on my bed the whole pregnant like the whole birth if they're agree with it that makes it a whole difference that's true if you find i'm not like i'm okay with you walking around there's different positions the ball 
some hospitals they might let you bring they have like a bath tub mm. so like, it really depends on your hospital and your doctor and like if you have the right doctor it could be a wholly different experience mm. so yeah i would definitely have to research what route mm-hmm. i want to take based off that because i don't want to be one of them ones who's like i'm la- laying in the bed the whole time you can't get up you can't walk yeah. walk around because my friend who recently had a baby a year ago she said that they wouldn't they did not want her to get up they wouldn't let her get up and when they found her like walking around, she would like get in trouble. I feel like that's a do. A lot of most now births are induced with pitocin. Yeah, like, I want that's mine not even to just come. Anymore. Seriously, most of the time, I just want mine to come how I'm supposed of to come. It's an option now, but... if it's like if it's past the point where it's like okay, we should induce because of it's like yeah. putting the child at risk. Fine, but other than that, I'm like I just want it to happen naturally. Like most doctors, like we should get pitocin started. And then, you know, they don't really, que- if your doctor says it, you don't question it. Right. But I legit, when I, in my little two months of l and I said, why is everybody on Pitocin? And they're like, that's just kind of the thing now. So that's like the new wave. Just go ahead and keep it, because that makes the contractions come, you know. Yeah, I'm like, if I do go to the hospital, like, and then I'm coming Pitocin, at the last minute. You have to be monitored even more closely. So that's why they don't want you walking around. You have to do, um, for us, it's 15-minute okay. charting. The whole shift. <laughs> I don't understand why they putting everybody on this medication. Yeah, I just want my baby to come how I'm supposed to. God made me to have kids. Yeah. Now, well, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that go into that. But anyway, like your body was made for it for the most part. So it's just kind of like, let it just happen how it's supposed to happen. Now, if it's at a point where the baby's in danger, then I'm yeah. kind of like, all right, go ahead. That's what I'm kind of like. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's a lot to think about, and that's very unfortunate for that um, mother because it's already stressful situation to be in, mm-hmm. and then you have this going on. Good doctor, gotta find a good doctor. I, I also, had a good doctor, but she uh, went to the ER to become like the obstructive ER. I can't OBGYN ER doc. So mm-hmm. I, my she's like gave her patients to somebody else, mm-hmm. and I just never tried to find a new one. I also was about to say, I feel like the way people interact with women are different than how they interact with men. Because I feel like if the father was there, they like, that would never tried it. that would have never happened. You know what? I don't think so. You know, I hate to say this because they're black. Say, and I've because I've, I've seen this, the father smelled like marijuana. And she would probably do the same thing 10 times worse. Because in the LND, I had a father, and you know, I don't care. He smelled like weed, like as they came in to give birth. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the nurses were, you know, whispering, da da da. Y'all smell that. And I was just like, whatever. Why are they whispering like most of them don't do, do drugs <laughs> or drink? I guess it's the fact that you came here, like, you didn't try to cover it up. I mean, how are you supposed to cover it up? It's very distinguishable. Change smell. your clothes and take a shower. You still can smell it sometimes. If you smoke a lot, and you're aside gonna from the that, if you are at home and oh, oh the water sudden, broke, yeah. would you? I got time to take I a shower and change my clothes. Shadow. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like so I'm like that. In knowing the way she sounded, if he would have came, and I hate to say, if he, if he didn't look a certain way, mm. she would have tried him. If he didn't look like, oh, he has money, da da da, she would have been like. What were y'all thinking getting pregnant? I'd be like, oh, whoa. Mm, I just feel like sometimes the way that people interact with women when they're on their own versus when they interact with them, if there's a man around, is different. Yeah. But in those circumstances that you listed, I I could see that also occurring that way. But I feel like when you got a man there, they'd be like, oh. Because it's like, the, you know, it's protected. They, they, they think we're vulnerable, vulnerable when we're by ourselves. I don't like that because I'm like, I don't should not have to have a guy with me for you to treat me I'm correctly. single, so that don't, you know, I buy my house by myself. I'm like. I'm like, yeah. But you know what I mean, though? Yeah. I mean, that's just society. I don't. I'm like, why? Oh, because he just said the same thing I said. Oh, now you listen? I don't like stuff like that. Mm-mm. Okay, so I want you to uh, tell us about your post-op BBO experience. Oh, it got canceled. Oh, so she you ended up in the hospital. Really? Yes. Okay, wait. Give them like a precursor because they don't know so what we're talking my about. my sister had a co-worker who went to Miami for BBL and she knew, I don't know how she knew I was a nurse. So my sister asked me like, do you just want to check on? Check up on her for like four days, an hour after you get off work. She just wants vitals and you to give her her blood thinner. I was like, cool, I do that in the hospital. Mm-hmm. So the day I was supposed to go, my sister texts me like, hey, she ended up in the hospital, like dehydration, leaking everywhere. Like that day you were supposed to go over to her house? Because I remember, mm-hmm. I think we worked Because I had stuff packed and ready to take, yeah. to do manual vitals. And she was like, yeah, she ended up in the hospital. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not going to go because she got issues going on. And I don't need to go over there and something happens. She tried to come at me about my license. So she ended up with complications? It was just dehydration 
that's what it ended up being but she didn't know that okay that's crazy but my sister said when she saw her it looked like a botched surgery oh like no. they didn't so she said i don't know how she explained like some of the skin and but she went to Florida, so it wasn't even one of them situations. Everybody where, went to Florida, though. That don't mean they good doctors out there. I'm just thinking about all the bottle surgeries I be hearing about be the ones that go to other yeah, countries yeah. and stuff. So I was just like, yeah, I wish it'd be extra money, but no, I didn't go. I was actually looking forward to it. To I'm wondering if it's like these people. I'm like. Are are they cutting corners with this type of stuff that they're getting complications like this or what? BBL is the most dangerous cosmetic surgery now. So I don't know. I'm just because I know they're like, oh, research your doctor, do this, do that, or whatever. And I'm like, how is it? They're probably looking. They're probably looking for the cheapest. That's what I'm saying. Is it because of that? But I don't think. I feel like people who go want just I just want a BBL and I want the cheapest one. They're not listening to what the doctor is saying. He probably doesn't go through their whole the whole plan with them. Like I want to do this, 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 and he probably doesn't go through it because he's like they don't get this one a butt. Because mm. I'm like I'll be watching um people little BBL transformation stuff like on YouTube because I don't know why I find it so fascinating. <laughs> but I know they'd be like, oh, make sure you're like your doctor's like certified in this and actually the plastic surgeon and all this other stuff yeah. make sure you do your proper research look through the reviews and blah 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 so i'm like i'm wondering if those people who are developing complications are they just not simply researching accurately or if it's really just like but it's just i don't know because a doctor can you know complications come with any surgery yeah i don't know because i'm like why are people dying like this we got like surgeries like fine-tuned for the most part yeah. like especially like regular like generic surgeries they'd be like you be in the hospital a day and they'd be like all right you can go home now yeah so i'm like i was just curious maybe because bbl surgery you only get like a post-op nurse it's all money because it's no insurance so it's only if if you can pay for a post-op nurse maybe mm. it turns out well but i don't think most people just be trying to do it on their so own so most stuff is out of pocket bbl is an elective surgery yeah it's all on you hmm Cause I know they have those little houses people be going to oh, after. To for that. Okay. Well, I mean, I figured that, but I'm just like, I, okay, I guess it might just come down to not so researching I, and not oh, is not affordable. So I think the girl I was like, I think she had that little house situation for me like two, three days while she was in Miami, and then she was flying back. Yeah, cause I'm like, I'm not. I would at least wanted it for like a week. I'm low key. My ass about to. I'm about to save enough money so I can if stay I can't in Miami it, for I'm like not doing it. Well, that part. So I'm saying like I think I'd be like, okay, I'm about to be in Miami for like a good month or something. Like you know what I'm saying? Before yeah. I like, or at least a couple of weeks, three. So weeks I get back so I can like walk by myself. Yeah, like you ain't gonna be able to sit on your butt for a while. But all the other stuff, yeah. Oof. I can't. <laughs> the way they be looking at the airplanes. Would you rather leave? fly after or have somebody drive you and you could lay down in the back maybe? I'd rather drive because flying. I'm looking at it. It's not even an embarrassment, but you be looking crazy because they can't sit on their spit butt. Say so be in them. First of all, that's uncomfortable for me. I feel like they be in them seats, squat over. I feel like the whole flight thing already is a hassle. So you it's already more, doing more that. That was say you already have being in surgery. You're in pain and all this other stuff. I'm like, I feel like I probably like. um First of all, I think I'd probably try to like be out there for like a good bit of time, like three weeks or something like that and then maybe i can um i'll have somebody with me obviously the whole yeah. time anyway so shit people normal people job can't get off for three weeks exactly but we nurses so if i was to ever get it done if i, I try to get my PTO, friend then, yeah. yeah i try to get my friend that's a nurse to help me out shoot i might i'll pay her too for her troubles hell you should yeah because i'm like like my friend loki wanted to think about it and she asked me Cause she was thinking about moving in with me and I was just like, I don't think I want to get off work and have to do more work when I get off. No, I completely understand That's that. That's just me being 100% with you. And I was like, you don't need to get it done. It was a whole thing. I was but like, stop. to be honest, they got people in Houston, so I'll just do it here. It's, you don't hear, I don't know why they be going to Miami and like the, 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 that's the I'm like, Dominican and Mexico be, money. Yeah, that's, it has to be more affordable. It is. My friend said she was looking it up and she said here it's expensive. Like 10 grand? Yeah, I think so. And what are the other ones? I think five to ten. Here? No, I think like other places. So oh. Especially out of country, like five, seven thousand. I'm like, I mean, 
it, I think it boils down to what you said. If I can't afford to do all the proper things, mm-hmm. if I am going to get it done, then I'm just not going to get it done. Because I was going to say, you don't really hear about the celebrities, but the, I mean, the lower they got list. The money to. That would say the lower list celebrities, okay, they be having mm-hmm. complications. But like almost every rapper has a BBL. Exactly. And I'm like, you don't really hear about them having complications, but I think it might just be a financial situation. They got, they have the staff, they have assistants, they can pay the post op nurses. Yeah. But the lower list celebrities, I, okay, I'd be hearing, I'd be yeah. hearing about them. Like, I'd be like, girl, but. That's something I'd have to like plan out. Like I got my notepad and paper. Process. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, it's just too much. I don't care that much for these. First of all, I'm married, so it really doesn't apply to me. Second of all, these guys yeah. don't be looking the best. So who am I trying to impress here? <laughs> they be talking about girls and how they be looking. Your stomach is hanging over your pants, money, sir. But not anymore. Not in 2022. What? I, I, I be like they be paying for it or they'll be like I make the money not anymore who the guys yeah I'm talking about they don't look good but that, that's the reason they be saying they don't need to get nothing done like I can look this way but I need you to look that way because oh. I'm either giving the money or I'm making the more, more of the money in the relationship but I'm like nowadays that ain't even no yeah that's not even accurate so I know what you're talking about you're yeah. talking about like how before it's like the woman needed to be like cute and pretty and stuff and the man needed to be having money yeah yeah, nowadays women making more than the men sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I was just I just be looking at stuff and I was just be like, that's crazy to me. I don't understand. I understand, but don't understand because I like I said I don't care that much and I'm not to spend all my money that could be going somewhere else on that. Yeah. We just gonna have to look how I look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I also wanted to talk to you about that patient we took care of the one i had to um what's it called not escalate but you know upgrade In to ni- imu 90 yeah so i think well the room number don't matter because i'm not going to tell y'all but i took care of that patient i didn't even have him the whole shift i don't remember when i transferred him over but I can't even remember what he came in for. But I wanted to get your opinion on something mm-hmm. after. Do you remember what he came in for? Like for you. I think shortness of breath, pneumonia, lung issues. Okay, so me and Kelsey ended up taking care of the same patient. Because I'm folk pool nurse for those who are not familiar. So I was on a different unit and I had this patient. And I ended up having to upgrade him to IMU, which is where Kelsey works. But she wasn't there that shift. She actually ended up getting him like the subsequent day or whatever. But we think the patient came in for shortness of breath pneumonia. All I remember is that the doctor wanted to put a Foley in him. And I was like, why? It was no, weird. He no, he didn't have a Foley yeah. because I told the doctor, I can't even, I think he's like a hospitalist or something. He wanted to put a, he's like, oh yeah, I'm glad I was in the room. Cause you know how family members. They'll and, be like, once they hear, like, oh yeah, they're like, you don't have to get up. I'll be like, yeah, let's get it. I'll be like, why though? They just be like, okay. But yeah, I've been trying to like be more cognizant, especially if I don't have a lot of patients of making sure I'm in the room when yeah. the doctor's in there. So I was in there because, first of all, they had a lot of anxiety. Ooh, child. That family was so anxious, and it was a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep going back in there. I don't want to say to appease them, but they were just needed more care than other people. So I was checking in on them more frequently. And the little old man was cute. I think he's like 90 years old, y'all. But um, the doctor was in there, and he was telling them, like, oh, the plan and all this other stuff, what we're doing and all this, because I had to draw labs on him. I think he was, like, a more recent admission. He was like, oh, we're going to put a Foley on him. And I'm like, why? Because this patient was ambulatory, and I had him, like, the first day he was there. Like, I think he came that night. I'm like, he can walk. So, what is like, what does he need the Foley for? I'm like, he's not retaining urine. I think he was just being, well, it don't even impact you. So I don't know why would you put a Foley in? It was just weird. It's just, I guess maybe the family was saying like they don't want him to get up or maybe, no. No, the doctor initiated. I guess because like, it's easier on everybody. We could probably hit my, we could measure. I mean, he looks looking at documentation. I know the nurses can measure easily. I don't know. I can, it doesn't affect, it honestly does not affect them. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why he would initiate it because he don't have to be the one dealing with it. We're yeah. the ones who ambulate the patient, take him to the restroom and doing the Foley care and everything else. So I was just like, why would you say this? So I kind of asked him that while I was in there 
And he didn't really have a good rationale. And I was like, okay, so I don't think he really needs one. And the daughter was like, yeah, we don't want him to have one. And I was like, okay. So I was glad I was in there because you know how sometimes doctors can talk to patients and they just go along with whatever they yeah. say. I don't know. That was a weird situation because I was like, why would you say that? So anyway, I can't even remember what happened to him. I think he ended up needing some more oxygen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think his oxygen demand increased. Uh, I can't remember what he was on, but it's always funny working on other units and they're not like I'm used to IMU. So I, when people Freaking go down, nothing. You know, I say when people go downhill, I'm like, okay, it's fine or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, I can just call it the doctor and we ended up upgrading him to IMU, but they were like, Oh, his oxygen is this. I've been that. looking, I've been getting report like nine liters. No, I think it was something like that. It wasn't too bad. Oh, and that was the other thing he wanted to put him. Was it on BiPAP? He was talking to them about all this stuff, talking about like, possibly intubating and things oh, he was like freaking this. Them out. i mean i guess you have to give them everything but it was just let's too not extreme. talk about it until we have to get there that's what i'm thing. like but nothing is indicating that at this point he's on nasal cannula so i was like the next progression you don't go to innovation that's like one of the last things we do I mean, it happen i go in after the doctors i can't go in the room at the same time they'll be like that he said all this i'll be like well we're not i'll be like well we're not there yet He's just telling, he just giving you the whole roadmap. We're at step one. He talked about step 16. And that's what We're I had to not explain to yet. them because they were already Worst like very scenario. anxious people. Mm -hmm. So I was like, he talking about putting a Foley in on his patient, intubating the patient. And I'm like, um, no. And so he was like on nasal cannula. This is before he even worsened. And I was like, there's a thing called a, um, not teleflex. What do we call Condom it at our facility? Oh, no. You know, on the other facility, we call it teleflex. Oh, he, he did high flow. flow. Okay, yeah. Is that what we called it at the other facility? Teleflex? Nope. It was just the best. That's the brand name. Oh, but I think I just called oh, it I that. I thought he did high flow. No, where we worked at before. I know. I was you, like, that's just the brand name. Did we call it by the brand name? We didn't name? call it he did high flow where we used to work because when we got here, we oh. were like, what is that? Oh, okay. It's been so long, y'all. <laughs> but uh, different facilities call some things differently. But anyway, the point is. I was like, we have heated high flows here, and that goes up to this amount of oxygen before we even have to do, think about mm -hmm. intubation. So the doctor is still in there while I'm saying that. And he was like, oh, we have that here? And I was like, this weekend when I work, I feel like I had to educate the doctor so much, and it's so, it's so annoying. It's like, I got too much to worry about, then I have to educate the person above me, the doctor who I should be taking lead from. I'll be like, come on now. I was like, I don't know if you're new or what what is going on here. I was like, why is he doing the most? I'd be like, this is a cute care hospital. Yeah, we do. I was like, yeah, we could put them on heat of high flow. It goes up to 60 liters. <laughs> 60 liters, 100%. <laughs> if you really got to push mm -hmm. it. But he was like, oh, okay. I'm just thinking like, what would have happened if I was in that room? Probably would end up in ICU. That's crazy. The importance of nursing. So I brought that up because I ended up having to upgrade him to you. And then how are they for you when you took care of him? I mean, they're very, they're like, that's their grandfather or father. They're very, but they were, they are very appreciative. Yeah. I really enjoyed very, them. So I was like, I was like, that's why I be telling people. I was like, it's okay if you make me work extra. As long as I feel the appreciation, it's fine. It like pays off. The patient was chilling. He wasn't worried about nothing. My shit, he was, he was fine. I just had to do a lot. He he pooped all over the floor. Oh, like he got up, was walking to the floor. They got him to walk or call me trail of poop. Like Aww. I walk in, I step in it, had it on my arms. Ew. Cause I'm like, and it's all well, over his legs. So that day they're like, what do you want to drink from Starbucks? What do you want to eat? You didn't have any secretions thrown at you, but you sure had it on you. Yeah. Oh no, I for sure have had it on. They never <laughs> had thrown on me though. But they were like, what do you want to eat? Like, we really appreciate you. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Because, um, after you took care of them, I had went to visit our unit and then I found out they were still there and I went to tell them, Hey, I'm like, Hey, you remember me? It's Laney. And mm -hmm. they were like, yeah. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Whatever. And they were like, I'm like, I'm glad to see you doing well, you know, whatever. And then she gave me a Chick-fil-A gift card. She gave me a and, I, gift card. and I remember she had gave y'all you one too. And Oh, cause I knew about it because our manager emailed me and told me that they recognized me and you. Yeah. So it was funny because I'm like, oh, Kelsey took care of them too. So that's hilarious because y'all know that we know each other, whatever. But it wasn't the same unit. So that's part of the reason why I went over because I was like, oh, they're still there. Let me go see how they're doing. So yeah, she gave me a Chick-fil-A gift card. How do you feel about people giving gifts? I love it. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're allowed to say gifts. We're not allowed to say money. 
Because I'm like, that's controversial. No, it's not. No, because they'll be like, yeah, you can buy a pizza for the unit. Okay, then. So no, why can't they give me a Starbucks They're about to say, but they try to say like, oh, it needs to be for the unit, not for the, the nurse. I'm, you know what? I will never get mad. If it was, say that wasn't my patient, he gave their nurse strict like her. I don't care. I didn't take care of him. I don't need anything. You that has nothing to do with me because I'm just like, if they want to appreciate that person, like they obviously they connected with them on some type of level. So mm-hmm. it has, I just feel like it's none of my business. It has nothing to do with but me. But if they do buy for you, I'd be like, thank you. Yeah, I don't even know who this patient is, but but I'm just like I don't know, understand the thought say, process behind. Oh, it needs to be towards who's the, the unit. People who be saying that? Like the manager? No, like who's when I general? I've read stuff regarding that, like with receiving gifts, like it, the more appropriate thing to be done is for it to be towards the unit. And even at our like last job, I remember when they used to try to say that occasionally, like oh, just tell them. Uh, t- for it to be towards the unit or whatever. They're not the ones who are on the ground wiping up poop. And I'm like, for and the I unit. walked out and realized I had poop on my watch. It was a whole day. No, you do not deserve my Starbucks gift card. <laughs> <laughs> like I've had patients, you know, I've had patients give me food. Like they'll buy themselves food, mm-hmm. and while they're getting food, they ask me, "What do I want to eat?" Yeah, I'm like, okay. And then the gift card I've had, and honestly. What's the difference between the gift card and money? Nothing, but at least it's like I can't take. I guess it's like you can't take the money and go do whatever you want with it. If they give you a gift card, you can only use it for that. I guess that's how you differentiate it. Who cares though? Nobody except for the. I don't know if it's. I don't know what the official rules are. Or nothing. I think I have read like if it's under seventy five dollars, we can take it. I feel like I've read that somewhere. Over that, that's when you start getting into issues. Which I've, I've never got anything over seventy five dollars, so I. Be but then at the same time, I can argue that this is uh, their cultural preference and stuff like that, yeah. and it's an insult to refuse it. I'm not refusing it. Who cares is one thing. The people who care, the people who don't get nothing. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't like if it's somebody else, I don't care, and if I get it, I mean, it really does mean a lot when patients be. Like, I'd rather get that than the Daisy Award. No, for sure. You don't get no Daisy Award. <laughs> I'm like, what's that gonna do for me? Nothing. Especially after we figured out or found out how they did the Daisy Awards. You want to talk about that, bro? Well, let me talk about on our unit. You know how I got the little pin? Mm-hmm. It wasn't from the Daisy people. They, our manager was like, they got all y'all's mixed up under for under our unit. They have other people's names from other units. They got it all mixed up, and she was like, our unit never wins because we legit because she wrote out she like emailed us like hey you've been nominated and she posted on the board like kudos so you're like can we get our i was like i know we get a nomination pin she was like honestly the official daisy people didn't even they got y'all's names mixed up with other units it doesn't even pop up on the nomination list under our unit they have people from other units under our unit she's like they do this every quarter it's annoying she's like i have pins that are old let me just give them to y'all how does that even work how do they get people mixed up on different units no idea. Whoever's over it, don't be paying attention. Okay, tell them about the time when we was at work and we saw how they did. The oh, it has work. to have specific wording. Wait, start from the beginning where we saw the box and they opened the box and like. What was the box? I don't remember. Remember? Okay, so they used to put the Daisy Rewards in a box mm-hmm. at our job, our old job, and they opened it one time and they start like they just dumped the box out. Where, who was doing that? Was it our was charge I nurse? there? Yeah, you were there because we were like mad because one of mine got um. Canceled. They, I know they say like if it doesn't have specific words in it, no matter how great it is, they it's throw it away. Trash. I have like, like code, not code word. Like it was, it was, it was specific words. I can't remember what they are at this time. So I'm like, so you want me to coach them on how to write the thing? It was kind of ridiculous, honestly. And after that, I stopped caring. But who was throwing them away? Was it our I charge don't nurse? Remember? I don't even know remember throwing them away. I just remember somebody telling me because we always. I was like. I we know, asked I about it, all right? I know I've been nominated a bunch of times. I was like, why haven't I at least got a nomination pin? And they said, maybe it never makes it to that far because they throw them out. That's what they'd be saying. I think our charge nurse was the one who told us. Yeah. I know she's the one who told that. us, yeah. But I can't remember because I remember getting the paper and it was because my patient had cussed in his that mine got canceled. And because he said... The other nurses were bad. He basically said that I was the only one who treated him like a human being and everybody else, like he downed the other nurses on the unit, essentially. And then he said a cuss word in there. I think he said something like, you're fucking awesome or something like that. <laughs> something like that effect or yeah. whatever. And I, and then I don't remember if they... I don't think they gave me the paper, but I just remember I, I read it. about it. 
Mm, I hear like yeah. we can't take this to have so many cuss words and they talk bad about other nurses. I'm like, if it's the truth, it's the truth. Well, what does y'all that tell be you? Looking into that, y'all y'all worry about what he's saying. Why are we not looking into what he's talking about? Ooh, <laughs> that's what I be thinking. Y'all worried about what he's saying, but y'all don't be thinking about like, wait, who were these nurses, and why didn't they treat him how he should have been treated? From what I remember, because I've had he was not talking about me. I've had him. He was he was just pee liked his pain medicine on time. That, that was, was it. it. It wasn't much. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't do anything special for him because I remember I, and him I'm the too. Type, if I have a patient like that, I set a timer because I'm like, that's not a big deal. I'll it's not pain that medicine. much. It's yeah, because you kind of know at the beginning of the shift when the nurses tell you, okay, like he likes his pain medication around that's the clock. Fine. Okay, if that's the case, I'm not even waiting for I'll the make patient sure around to that ask. time. I'm not doing anything else, and I can yeah, still, I get early. You, I be, before I even pull it, you want your pain medicine? Oh yeah, let me go get it. Yeah, I'm like, I, honestly, sometimes I don't even ask. I just bring it in because I know you want it. If not, if you don't want it, okay, I'll go return it to the pixies. But most most of the time they're not going to say no like when you get report like oh they like around the clock medicine they like it on time okay why are we even arguing about this it kind of reminds me of that nurse practitioner we talked about earlier this episode what is this discussion about why are we talking right now they uh, they said like what they, they make wanted. it a big deal like i'll get report i'll be like i'll just like implement it. like hey he likes his stuff on time not telling you i'd like to Tell you it's gonna be a hard shift. I'm just letting you know your patient would like his pain medicine. On He's time. gonna call you if it's a little bit later. He might even call you 15 minutes early. Don't get mad. That's just how he is. Yeah, and if you already know what's going on, then just I'll be like, give okay. it. Yeah, I think that's easier. All right, cool. Now I don't gotta worry about you. I'm gonna just bring it in when it's time. He Most won't bother time, you for anything else. I'm like, it's like every three hours, every four hours. Okay, like it's not that deep. Every three hours, you giving it four times a shift. Come on, like I really understand the big deal behind some of these things and why people be having a nasty attitude. With I think people. they be having an attitude because they don't have good time management. But when they always call in, they be always busy, and then they always end up giving it late, and then they start complaining. So that goes to the nurse. I, I just, I just be annoyed, <laughs> like hearing about it from other people. He always calling me. Okay, well, if you went in there on time, he wouldn't be calling you. I've had like uh, the other day, I had a patient I'll get a report, and she was like, "Oh, I don't want her back. She was crazy for me last night." And I legit said, "I said, what did you do?" She was <laughs> fine with me. I have had to say, that. she's like, I don't know. But then once I went to the patient's room, she explained it to me. I was like, "Oh, I get it." She said, like, um, they put all the rails up on her. She was sleeping, but then she like woke up and she has history like claustrophobia and kind of freaked out because all the rails were up. And she was like, I started hitting the call light. And she was like, after 9 p.m., they don't answer. I've heard Which some. Which is true. I, I was about to say, say I've heard some bad things about that unit. And Kelsey worked night shifts for how many months? Um, just a month. Well, a month. So she's seen enough to know. And she was like, so then because they were not answering the phone, she started screaming. But then the nurse took it as, oh, she acting up. When she explained it to me, I was like, oh, it makes sense. She said she started screaming. She's having a panic attack. She's kidding the call like nobody's answering. So she starts screaming to get attention. Then she starts pulling her gown off. I'm like, the night shift nurse didn't even try to investigate. Like, why are we acting like this? Because if you understand it, it's like, oh, it's not the big of a deal. I would be screaming too if I'm hitting my call like, you not asked coming. Her. I said, why are we screaming? I didn't hit the call like, she's like, they didn't answer. I was like, okay, then I get it. But you can't get nobody to start screaming. the top of the problem where all of the bets are real shouldn't have been up in the first place? Yeah. That's the restraint. Because I think after we cleaned her, just in my, I think I may have put it up just in like, because I didn't have that bedside table. So I left a little longer. She's like, did you put this up? I said, maybe my bad. I'll put it down. She's like, can you just like remind them not to put it up? Because then I start freaking out. I was like, no problem. I just forgot in the moment. I mean, that's fine. But yeah. I'm just saying like all four. I think the reason the nurse put it up that night. <clears throat> so the day before I had her and I saw the patient at Ambien, PRM. The patient was like. They have not been giving it to me because I'm on BiPAP and I cannot sleep. So I was like, why? They've not been given Ambien because she's on BiPAP? I said, why? She's like, the nurse said, like, either they're not allowed to do that or they didn't feel comfortable. It's not a new nurse, but it's a new nurse to this, our, the hospital I'm at. Okay. So then I asked the doctor, just like, if the doctor says, it's okay, we're going to give it. So I said, hey, are you cool with her receiving Ambien while she's on BiPAP? He's like, yeah. It wouldn't have been prescribed. He legit was like, yeah, that's why I lowered her dosage. Please give it. So I told the night shift nurse, the same one. I said, hey, she said, you had, you didn't give it. I said, I checked with the attending. This is a good attending. He said, give it. I said, please give it. And if you don't feel comfortable, get somebody else. Don't even get somebody else to do it. Get the chargers to do it. If you're not comfortable... I could see why, because she was like, you know, and we can make people confused, and she's on BiPAP. I was like, I get it, but she is struggling because she cannot sleep. Like, give her the ambient, and she takes it at home. 
I just don't understand. And I told the patient, I said, hey, I was like, as nurses, we are allowed to, you know, judgment calls. Every nurse can make their own judgment call. So, I I mean, she's allowed to say that. But I was like, I will try to reiterate with her to give the medication because I would give it. Okay, just get a different nurse at this point. Yeah. But why are you talking about that? That reminded me of this other nurse we used to work with at our old facility who used to have problems giving pain medications to patients. She, just in general, right? Yeah. You remember? It start, starts with a J. She's I'll think about older. it. Just give me a second. She was older. But she left. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. I feel like she must have an incident. I think so, too. But my thing is, with, I mean, I guess the charge nurse can't make accommodations for everybody all the time because there's so much going on. Because I'm about to say, you can't just not be giving people pain medications because you're uncomfortable. So I'm kind of saying, like, what is the line here? If it's every blue moon, like, hey, I really don't feel comfortable, okay. But if it's every single patient you have, every couple of shifts with pain meds, and you're just like, no, I legit would be... I think, did we ever ask her why? Mm-mm. I'd have been like, what's the issue? Why? Could you... If you would give me a good explanation, okay. But nobody ever asked her, like, why do you have an issue even pain medicine? And even if you did have an incident in the past, that has nothing to do with the patient today. You're not taking proper care of them because of your personal issues. Yep. But my thing is, so it's a line here because I'm like, okay, some line is like, okay, you're not comfortable, which, okay, like you said, nurse judgment calls, like whatever. All right. You know, sometimes people might not feel some, like some is appropriate, but if that's the case, why don't you contact the doctor? But here's my thing. In this opinion, the patient's IMU, so you already have less patients. So you can watch them closer. That's why I was like, give her the ambient. They're on the monitor. Their vital signs. Of, you, can you can check them the however bypass. you want. That's the issue. On on night shift when them bypass be coming off, they don't be hearing them. That's why they have alarms now. I'm about to say I thought you said it connects to the call Only right now, right? If the RT connects a certain cord to this box, okay, then it'll go off. But I was like, that's the issue. When I work um, nights, I have there's just one patient was not my patient. The bypass kept on going off, and I looked at the nurse like, "Would you like to go take care of your patient?" And then they kept on coming. The pa- the patient's daughter was like, "I know you're not the nurse, but do you mind coming in the room?" I'm like, sure. And I came out. I said. I told you what's the nurse. I said, can you please take care of your patient? Thank you. I'm tired of going in the room. Thanks. It's about the fifth time. I'm just not understanding these nurses. Like, I'm like, why are you here? (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand. Well, for the paycheck, I guess. But I'm like, it's not that deep. But I'm like, if you do your job, it makes it a little bit like. Yesterday, we were short staff with pizza for texts. And I felt it because certain nurses were still overusing the tech. So I was like, I didn't even have the chance to ask them for help. So I, was I understand exactly everything. how that is. Bro, I couldn't. Like, I was so sorry about the shift. I was like, I told my tech, I feel like I was like, I, I don't even want to ask you for help. Because I know you're already being overworked and you already have more patients. So I went, because when we only have two techs, we supposed to do our blood sugars. Right. And there's these two certain nurses who still weren't doing them. So I went to, I was about to broadcast, but I was like, you know what? I'm not the charge. Because I went to the charge. I said, hey, this is your unit. How about you tell your nurses to do their own acu chest? Because they're still using the tech. So I took the blood sugar machine away from the tech. And I was like, give it to me. You're not doing the blood sugars. Like, I don't see what the, they know, these nurses know what they're supposed to do, but they're lazy. And they try to get away with whatever they can. But everybody else feels it. Like the techs is going to feel it. The other nurses who can't ask the tech for help, we feel it because they're overused. It's so annoying. I'm like, what can we do about that? Is it really you think the ch- charge nurse responsibility or like what? Like what can be because done? Because I don't it? think I'm allowed to speak to the nurse and be like, why are you doing? Because that's I'm not I'm not above her. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's why I go to charge and be like, you might want to have a conversation with her because it's getting to the point where it's like, come on. Now. But then the bad thing is that, like you said, it impacts you because I've definitely felt that before too, especially when we were with our good techs. Mm-hmm. And like I'm like, I know you're doing all this for other people, and I really don't want to ask you for help but i need I'm help tired now. yeah and i'm like why should i why should i be penalized basically or yeah. like have to go without because these other nurses don't want to do the bare minimum you don't want to get your patient a cup of water like the patient would be like i'm dirty they'll come out find the tech hey the patient's dirty i remember one time i did say something i said so you were in the room and came out and then found the tech and they don't say nothing they'd be like it's okay they act like they don't hear because my thing is i'm like okay 
you're making the tech jobs hard, harder. And then you're making one. the patient mad because you're gonna make them. You're gonna make them wait. Yeah. Okay. The patient first is like, okay, you making them wait to get clean. That's patient safety type stuff. You're overburdening the tech, and then thus overburdening the other staff who don't have access to the tech because mm-hmm. they too preoccupied for you. So I'm like, what can be done about that? I guess it could start with the tech being like, I'm not doing that. That's why I be telling the tech. I'd be like, you have to say no. But they don't. Sometimes they just it be easier to say yes than no. Yeah, because I'm like, I guess it'll start there. That's why I start taking stuff away from them. I'll be like, give me this. Give me this. You can't do it. But go do what you gotta do. You're not doing this. And then it would go to the charge nurse to enforce it. Go up to the nurse and be like, hey, like have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Why can't everybody just do their job? That's how I felt yesterday. Every time the nurse would call the tech and I was sitting there, I legitimately like, no, so the uh, the patient's family member came out. I was like, hey, so the nurse, hey, the patient's dirty. Mm-hmm. The nurse called to say, hey, she's dirty. I legit over the vocer. I said, my sarcasm. I said, isn't the patient a one person assist? You can't do it yourself like the other tech's been doing the whole shift. And she was like, all righty then. And then waited for the tech to do it. But then be trying to have conversation with you like we, fr- bro, that's yesterday. I want to be like, why are we talking? because i'm like if i can't res- like i'm i try to be big on it i can't respect your work ethic we don't need to talk about anything else that's how i feel i feel like i at the, being a nurse really makes me like this is who you are as a person like i don't know what that is about But they don't be like that as a person let's be like that's how i be like what is going but it, i don't, it don't like, sound like they do but i'm just stories but i'm just like i can't i can't fuck with you essentially because you'll let me drown you'll let somebody drown if you if if that means you gotta do more work, you're gonna let the rest of the. the I mean, floor I'm just saying, like that tells me a lot about your character as a person, okay, yeah, like the, the type of stuff and decisions you make as a nurse, and based off of that, it's like I'm not, I can't, like I don't have no respect for you. That's whenever I feel like they're about to ask me for help. I'm waiting for one of the nurses who don't help ask me for help. I'm be like, when have you ever helped me? But then they turn it back and be like, Kelsey got an attitude. No, I do not. I'm just the only one being honest with you. They legit would be like, I've been told by manager. Somebody has told me I have an ma- attitude. And I wanted to be like, is it because I called them out? Like, can you tell me why? But I was like, I don't even want to get into it. Because I know when I get upset, I kind of go off on people. But it's not unwarranted. Nothing's. I don't do anything unwarranted. You deserved it. <laughs> I'm not. When have you went off on somebody? Oh, yeah. You went off on somebody? Trash nurse. When? It was when I was leaving. So I didn't give up. They did something. I would. They changed my whole assignment. It was already a busy day, and you know I get mad. I start crying, so I went to the nurse station, yelling and crying. <laughs> oh God! So I was like, I'm pretty sure I know who said I had had a problem. I was like, this is why I'm leaving because of this stuff right here. Like this is always an issue. I'm so glad that I can't write back. So whatever. This is a lot. <laughs> Yeah, because other I think that's the issue. Like other nurses don't say anything, and once again, it takes certain nurses to say things. That's what's annoying about but it. But now my manager, when I say something, she listens. Now she listens. Mm-hmm. She takes me more seriously. I think because I'm starting to. I don't even say pull rank on the unit, but I kind of pull rank on the unit. Like everybody comes to me for help. But the thing is, we already had like. I don't want to say a social standing, but kind of on the unit where it's like, okay, we're the reliable, dependable nurses. Mm-hmm. We're competent. If there's an emergency, we could take care of it. We don't really ask for much and things of that nature. So I'm like, if I'm like that already, why wouldn't you take what I say seriously? In my charge this past weekend, had to tell the manager something like Kelsey's having an issue with this person. And she told her, if Kelsey is having issues with them, you need like, it's an issue. Uh, Jay. Yeah. Cause yeah. I'm like, if I don't, Cause I'm like, honestly, I don't really get too upset about any, honestly, I just really want you to do your job. That's really it. I'm like, I, I don't need you to do nothing extra. I really don't care about a lot of things. I just be trying to make it through the shift too sometimes. So I just be like, okay, just do the vital signs, do the blood sugars. Okay. If I need help. And most of the time I don't overuse help. I just ask for help when it's like, okay, it's a two person assist. If I'm already in the room. Mm, I will okay. I will walk them to the restroom. I'm, I'm not, not that type of nurse. So I feel like. When people see how I work, then you should be like, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
So that's why with uh, the text, they'll say like, I know if you call for help, I'm going to help you because like you always helping me. Then that's how I feel about it. I'm like, it should be a common thing. Like, okay, if I'm calling, what do I call for? Mm -hmm. Not really much. Okay. Okay. That means she really needs help versus somebody who calls you all the time for irrelevant things. You're just sitting there doing nothing. That's ridiculous. And most of the time I like... I mean, did we not in this position too frequently? But if it was the case, like say, but for it's instance, because they don't put their foot down. No, say, say for instance, it's a tech. Okay, I'm going to go do this. Can you do that? And I just leave it at that because I feel like sometimes when you tell them I'll go to this room and then that room, they literally would just let the patient sit and shit until you finish cleaning this one, and then now you got to go to the other room and clean that. I was too. like, if you tell them like, hey, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Once, once I think enough people tell them no, they'll start to get like, okay, I can't be doing this no more. They're gonna complain to the manager, but their complaints are like have no weight, like we no merit. No, like you're not that. I don't say you're a bad nurse, you're a bad team player because I don't mm. know how they interact with patients and take care of them. So I'm like, even if you complain to me, like they won't help me. Why? And then we all know why because you overwork them. You do not. Example yesterday. They had a real, like, I am always the one helping people lift heavy patients. Da, da, da. Yesterday, I couldn't do it. I was just like, my back, like, I was sore because I was doing so much tech work myself. So, Joy, the charge nurse was just like, don't even ask Kelsey, like, today. Mm-hmm. And I made it very clear. So, she asked the nurse who doesn't help. The nurse was like, oh, do you need it right now? I need to go do something in my patient's room, which was not urgent. The charge was like, so you're saying no. She's like, uh, she's, you're saying no. Okay, that's noted. And then walked away, like. She legit was like, can you please come help us five minutes, Max? She's like, do y'all really need it? I need to go do this, this, in this room. And she just needs a pass minutes. So while we're on the topic of how these nurses are, give me five characteristics to build That's your true. perfect nurse. Team player. uh, Reliable. It's not even a word. There's no, like, I don't know everything, but I'll figure it out. Knows when to ask questions. Um, advocates. Does well in an emergency. Mm. Yeah, because some people is like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> ah, so does well in an emergency. Strong advocate. Knows when to ask questions. Reliable and a team player. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Of course, knows their stuff, but oh well, yeah, okay, you're like that's assumed. Yeah, but I'm like I don't. I'm gonna ask the question. Yeah, that kind of goes into that. Yeah. The knows when to ask questions. Because I have people asking questions, and I legit want to ask them. Don't you have double my experience? I'm confused. But then I got an attitude if I ask that. <laughs> I just I like I, I like I've been saying this whole episode. I don't understand. I don't understand what be but going on. But then they'd be catching head. my sarcasm. They were like, should I give this med? I'd be like, first of all, should I give this amiodarone? I'd be like, first of all, do you have parameters? I'd be like, no. I'd be like, well, you know, more amiodarone is mainly for the heart. So what's the issue? I'm just, their blood pressure is low 100s. And I was like, I always be like, well, me, either I'm going to, either if I'm not comfortable, I'm going to ask the doctor. That's what I'm about to say. So I'm like, I don't even know why you came to me. You could just ask the doctor. Well, and that's what I don't understand either. Yeah. Why don't you just ask the doctor? Because they're the ones who prescribe the medication. So they have some idea of what they want it to look like or whatever. And I was like, they didn't put any parameters. Then you use nursing judgment. Me, if your blood pressure is above 100 and I'm giving you something for your heart, I'm fine giving it. Amiodarone really doesn't even affect. That's the, what I, and I was like, what is, I legit was like, what, what is, is it amiodarone for? for? And she yeah. Like, oh. Obviously I know what she's going to say. I'm just like. Yeah, kind of answered it. It's for the heart rate. Yeah, I'm like, that's... To regulate, like, help with the rhythm. Right, so I'm like, okay, it doesn't impact the blood pressure like that, but go off. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, look it up, ask the doctor. Because I'm like, honestly, it has nothing to do with me. Because if you give it, what you go do? Say, oh, well, Lainey told me I could give the medication. But that then I start to sense. get tired because I have a certain charge and she'll be like, I told everybody you're the resource person for today. Oh, yeah. I'm a and I legit, had, I legit told her, I said, please stop. There is no Yesterday, resource Yesterday, she kind of caught my attitude. The charge nurse is the resource nurse but for the day. That's when she like, she she legit was like, you're the number two resource nurse. I want to let you know. And I was like, I legit was like, I don't want to be today. I was like, I get it. But I was like, today, I don't want to do it. We're short staff. I got a headache. I don't want to be the resource person for today. 
I shouldn't. I feel like I'm a resource person every shift. I legit call myself the mini charge nurse. Because sometimes they go around the charger and just come to me. Yeah. I'm glad I'm out that. So I don't have to deal with most of that now because I'm oh, yeah, a float pool floater, nurse. They ain't going to come for you. Yeah, I'm a float pool <laughs> nurse. So they don't be asking me much of anything. And Kelsey knows. I like ants. I'm, I'm, I'm here to help. But I'd rather help new grad nurses over experienced nursing asking me stupid questions. And there are such things as stupid questions. I don't care what they say. So what's a stupid question? Give me a second. We come back. I think about it. It's been so many. <laughs> but I was saying but that. Like new grad. They don't know. Like they're new. So I'm more than like happy to help you mm-hmm. learn. But these. Ex- At this point, if you have more experience than me, you ask me any questions. It's a stupid question. You can't say that. Okay, no, you because I ask questions. You're because right. no, because I'm like because the, people be working different specialties and stuff. I, took it, I take that back. Yeah, that was too far. <laughs> I don't know. I'll think about one. I've heard stupid questions before. Like one that I could think about is that I we had a nurse one time that worked on our unit. He wasn't a new grad. He had what two years of experience when he came to us. Um, he asked me about primary tubing versus secondary tubing which is kind of like an elementary sort of questions you learn that in the first couple of months of being a nurse (laughs) you really kind of learn it in in nursing school but he was asking me how should he hang the fluids and i was just kind of like you're kidding right i'd be like what they teach you as you're at the hospital no i literally uh pulled up some slides and stuff and properly educated him the I would have primary... been like, go get the IV pole and I'm going to show you. Like, what? I think I would have been like, you're serious? Okay. Yeah, I know. But I knew, but I'm like, he asked me questions occasionally. So I knew when he was asking me, he was serious. But so, I feel like low key, he knew who to ask so that he didn't get in bed. Like, let me go ask him. Cause I know but you true. know how I am sometimes. So that's not guaranteed. True. Yeah. So, so he, I was like, okay, he came to me. He asked the question. All right, let me just answer. And then sometimes it's just easier for you to answer the question than to be doing all that. Them, yeah. yeah, so I pulled it up and I showed him, okay, this is what this is and this is what this. I don't know. How how have you been nursing for two years and you don't know the primary and secondary tubing? Winging it. Yeah, tubing differences. But that's a stupid question I've had. And I think it's kind of how Kelsey said, based off of your years of experience, that's something that should have already been known. Yeah, I think pe- questions that are not stupid questions are the kind that are like more like situational based. Like you have this okay. patient, this is going on. Should I do this or that type of thing? That I think is not a stupid question because I'm like every patient's kind of different and depending on like vitals and how they're acting and whatever. I don't think those are stupid questions. I think mine I might think be more questions. like knowledge based, based off of your years experience. Like you, what have you been doing up until this point? I think I okay questions will be asking me and I'll be like you don't know why you're giving this medication do you I'll be like you don't know why you're giving this med I could say that's a stupid question for most people because they have links on the mar that you could click Even on me, if I'm giving a med that I don't give all the time let me look it up because sometimes a patient will be like what is this for and I want to know well so and you need to be able to tell the them and then when you go in the room you should be telling them what you're giving them anyway and then the link is so accessible it's right on the screen all you have to do is click it and it tells you exactly what it's for yeah so I think that those are kind of dumb because I think it's because the resources there is easily accessible Like stuff that you don't see all the time. I don't think those are stupid questions because I know I still ask questions about chest tubes and stuff like that. Cause I'm like, I don't don't see them too often. I'm like, yeah, I've been a nurse for this long, but I'm like, I didn't see maybe like, I didn't think that what I said through. Like, I'm like, I didn't see them. No, but I'm like, it's warranted because it's like, there are some things that are stupid questions. And some of them I'm like, okay, some are situational based. And then some of them like, okay, it's a skill that I haven't had to do in a long time. So I like, okay, that makes sense. So I do think some questions are stupid questions, though. But you know what I hate? Because you're... Okay, so for me, I, at our old hospital, we were not allowed to put dog paws. Right? Oh, yeah. So at this hospital, I didn't know what the rule was. So I went to my charge. I was like, hey, at my allergy, I have to tell them, at my old hospital, I was not allowed to. What do we do here? She's like, we do it. And I'm like, isn't there a wire in it? Can punch your lungs? She's like, yes. I said, first, so this first time, I know it's still the same as an NG tube. Do you mind just showing me? Right. She caught an attitude. And that pissed me off. Well, and that's inappropriate, too, because I'm like, I'm coming to you. And, and it's not even like you not, didn't give her any context. But even if you didn't give her context, you still should come in and help me. And I'm going to show me once. And then I'll. Yeah, but I'm like, even if you didn't give her context, 
one of your youth, so you don't ask that many questions. So just come in and help me. I wouldn't be asking if I don't know. Yeah. And then to piggyback off of that set, that point is like you would rather me ask you and have you do it than or me to mess something exactly up. than me to do something to cause patient harm. So you're gonna add it to with me for trying to keep my patient safe because I'm not familiar with doing something. Bro, so, and then after that, I, caught, I was like, oh, I'm so over this. And she and then she decided, oh, okay, well, you know, let me make this a teaching. And I was like, cool. It was just like the whole vibe. Once I asked her, she got to ask you. I was like, oh, you're going to piss me off. Yeah, I don't like stuff like that. Especially after you're like, oh, hey, I haven't done this here before. But that's kind of how I felt too before when I had called our relief charge nurse that in the beginning of our um, working at that facility. And I had told her, you know, I had never had a patient death at that facility. Mm -hmm. What is the charting yeah. and all that? I'm like, that's a fair question. What is the problem? Yeah. I didn't like Just how she handled it. you do all the time. Yeah, but, but she didn't know. And I'd be like... She should have told me that. And I would be like, hey, I don't do this all the time. Let me find out and I will let you know. But she And that's said, what, what you should say? do as a charge nurse. Well, first of all, she avoided me for most of the time. And that's what pissed me off. Because I, when I found out that she didn't know, why didn't you just tell me that? You're wasting my time. We the patient is dead. Together, like, yeah, I'm something. like, the patient is dead. And I'm coming to you. First, okay, background for y'all. Um, so my patient died is my first patient death at that hospital. Like Kelsey said, different facilities do things differently. They have different charting and things of that nature. Most stuff is like similar, but there's like where is charted at and where mm -hmm. different things that is different. Plus, we didn't use the charting system that we have at this facility at our old one. So it's really different. Um, and that's not just with facilities. That's with units, too, because y'all know I float. So a lot of times I'm like, what do y'all do here? Anyway. My patient died. It was an expected death. I asked my relief charge nurse who was charging at the time, like, hey, um, the patient passed or whatever. Um, can you come help me do the stuff? Basically, like the postmortem care. Like, what am I supposed to do? She said she's putting the IV in on another patient. I said, mm, OK, I don't know. That don't really take precedent for me. Like with the patient and death stuff have to be done in a timely manner. And it was towards the end of the shift. So it's like, I am not trying to be here till nine. Yeah, I'm night. like, it was like maybe five. I'll be trying to rush. Like, what do I need yeah, to I'm do? Yeah, I'm like, it was like five something. So I'm like, okay, sometimes that patient death stuff takes a while because you got to call all these people and then document and all that. So she, after she finished doing the IV, because I think me and the tech, I was like, okay, let's clean them up, put them in the bag. Where's the body bags at? You know, I don't know where nothing is. Where's <laughs> the body bags? And I think at that time, Maybe that's at the other facility. I didn't know if the body bags was in the um, supply room, supply room think, yeah. or if you had to get it from, like, uh, who didn't people Central downstairs? Supply. Yeah, Central Supply. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, no, luckily I was with our good tech, so she we did that. And then after we got them situated, I go to find the charge nurse, and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do? And she's looking at me, looking at her, and we're I'm like... Background, we're used to um, during death charge nurse do everything. Oh, we just that is the true. That's true. They do the paperwork. They make the calls. We just clean the patient up, put it in a body bag, and do whatever the chargers needs us to do. This facility is not like that. It's kind of like, I'll do what I can, but you kind of do. And, and, yeah, okay. I forgot to mention that because that's yeah. true. The only reason why I know what to do is because I used to relieve charge before. Had I been a normal staff nurse, I wouldn't have known none of this. So I knew what I did there. I just didn't know what I was supposed to do here and where to do it at. So I'm telling her that and she didn't really say anything. And I'm like, OK, like, w what are we going to do or what are we doing? And girl, I was pissed that day. I'd have been like, I know the main calls, of course, to the family. No, the main thing is somebody has to pronounce it. and You got to call life gift within a timely I manner. think I had already did that. Like, oh, I so think then, I had already called the NP to paperwork. pronounce it. It was the paperwork and the chart and stuff yeah. that I was unsure about. And then come to find out she was kind of running around like what's it called like you know like avoiding me type of thing and i was trying to call her and she wasn't answering stuff like that so it's pissing me off because i'm like you playing games with me like that's when i start getting mad so then come to find out she don't even know how to do it so why you just didn't tell me that the first time i called you yeah. all right like kelsey said okay i'm not sure what to do okay let me figure it out or tell me you don't know what to do can i figure it out i don't know communicate something because I don't care. Communicate something. I would have been fine with that. Then me trying then to call you and you avoiding me. If I don't know, I'm going I don't even. If I don't know any other chargers, I'm still gonna call them. I don't know any other chargers. Say I start relief charging. I don't know anybody other than my unit. I'm just gonna call 
call five Brazos charge and I'm like, hey. Well, that's what I'm saying. Call AOS or OA or whatever mm-hmm. they call them there. But I'm like, do something. Or at least tell me you're not going to do nothing so I can do something. <laughs> that I would. I been... wish the charges would tell me I'm going to do nothing. But honestly, would you rather that or are you calling them and they ain't avoiding you? And it's yeah. like six o'clock and the patient ain't oh, nothing I'm done. Pissed. I, mean, the, like, I, was a, I was livid. I think I was there. Yeah, I was. I think I was. No... I don't know. I know um, the tech we like was there and I was ranting to her. I was pissed off. Like I ain't been that mad in a while, but I was mad at her and it was bad because I liked her overall, but I was pissed at her. She knew I was mad because I'm like, you left me hanging. You wasn't there to help me. I don't think it should be our responsibility to do the paperwork. Yeah. I didn't like that. And yeah, so she was running around avoiding me and then come to find out. So the charge nurse ended up helping me do the stuff. That's what ended up happening. Luckily, she was there early. Oh, night shift, right? Mm-hmm. Night shift nurse ended up helping me do it. That's just ridiculous. It shouldn't be that way. Mm. So to close this episode, we always scrub and sip. So do you have anything you want to scrub this I'm, episode? I'm, I've been chilling. I'm chilling. Nothing's different. All these things she didn't talk about, and she's talking about she's been chilling. What do you want to get rid of in nursing or something you don't care about, care for? Bad nurses. Oh, so you just scrubbing all of them. I feel like they need to, I feel like they've been getting free rides. I really feel like they've been getting free rides and they, these managers do not hold them accountable. And that just makes everybody else get mad. For me, I like, when I came back to my unit, I was like, I'm not going to be involved in anything. But it's so hard for me to sit back and see stuff. So I Mm -hmm. can't help it. I'd be talking, I'd be opening my mouth. But I'm just like, it's not fair. I'm like, because I know I work hard on my shift, keep my patients happy. That's why I feel like to this day, I can count on my hands the number of complaints I've had, which is like two. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, I want to get rid of bad nurses, not fair to everybody else. I want to scrub people not talking up and saying what it is. Because I feel like a lot of the situations we've been in and encountered in nursing, if people would have spoken up and um expressed their experience to people then it wouldn't have gone on for as long as it did there's been a lot of experience like experiences like that that we went through where it's like oh well we didn't know because they never told us sort of thing Mm -hmm. or it's like okay only i'm saying something so it don't seem like it's a problem for the unit it's like it's a me problem and it's like, nah, it's everybody problem, but everybody not telling you. So I want to scrub that. I want to scrub nurses like um, learning how to speak up and just saying what it is. I don't know why they don't do that. What they they not gonna fire you? I'm like, we uh, we run the hospital. At the, come on, like we. Of course, I need doctors to put in my orders. But if doctors did not have nurses to carry them out, where would they be? But my thing is, the things that you are talking about is not bad things. They would improve everybody's stay. It would improve nurse satisfaction. It would improve patient satisfaction because nurses are more satisfied. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what the hesitancy is about. They're not going to fire you for speaking your truth and uh, trying to make a situation better and being part of the solution. So I don't really understand that. So I don't really like it. But I'm yeah. glad now that I'm a flow pool nurse, I don't really have to deal with those sort of things because that used to always like irritate me. You got anything you want to sip to this episode? Just living life. <laughs> I don't know what I want to sip to. Mm. I guess I'll sip to the same thing. So wherever y'all are right now, grab a drink and sip along with us. So what is your final review for the fire island it's good that pasture kind of like hits me at first and then sweet and smooths out but you see i'm drinking it and i don't i don't drink mm-hmm. and i think i feel it so whatever i feel it so out and of that 10 for that first i see cringe and i'm like okay it's good it's a seven maybe a little less passion for it next time i think so too because it's like a little bit too sweet for me yeah but you know, it's because it's a, I think it's because it's a passion fruit puree, puree. Yeah, it's a little bit too sweet. That's why I'm like, mm. So we give it a seven out of 10. If y'all try this out, definitely let us know down below in the comments. We want to thank Kelsey once again for coming through. It's always a pleasure talking to her because we are very familiar with each other. So I feel like we can have like a lot of authentic 
conversation and it's not like an interview yeah. format because I kind of get annoyed. So we want to thank Kelsey for coming by again because whenever I call, she come. <laughs> Do you link my Instagram or not? I need to get more followers. I can't remember if I did. It I'll make sure fine. because the the one that we did the last time just released. Okay. So I'll go in the description box and put it on there. So definitely follow Kelsey at Kelsey Lou. Is that what it still is? I don't remember. It is Kelsey Lou. I don't know if there's a dot in between or not. It'll be under the description box. Yeah, we'll put it in the description box. Give her a follow. If y'all need somebody to talk to regards to nursing, <laughs> y'all can hit us up because we're here for that. Um, so we'll see you guys again next week. I think we're going to have to have Kelsey on. Kelsey is a regular at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll see y'all again the next time. Oh, 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 oh,